He's got patrol. <laughs> Welcome here. It's a beautiful Thursday afternoon here at White Bear Lake High School South Campus. It's where the tennis courts are held, and for the first time on SCC Sports, we are holding the White Bear Boys Tennis Matches here exclusively live on SCC Sports. Alongside tennis uh, assistant coach Seth Salinger, I'm Alex Westad. Seth, it's awesome to be able to come out here and do these tennis matches. Oh, it's been fantastic. It's, it's been a little bit of a rough season with the snow coming so late, and so we're trying to get a ton of matches in towards the end. Our section assignments occur on uh, Tuesday this week, so this is our last uh, SEC match we'll have for the year. Of course, with the weather and other compatibility issues. This may be the first time that some of our viewers have seen a tennis match. What are some things that we should be looking for as we get going? Well, we're watching a doubles match right now, and one of the great things about doubles is the points go really, really quickly. At the pro level, an average point takes about two and a half shots. So you're looking for a serve, a return, and then the team uh, who served is looking to put the ball away with a volley. So we're going to be hopefully seeing a lot of that. Uh, we're watching our number one doubles team today with Bennett King and uh, James Williams. They're both juniors at White Bear Lake and have been playing uh, on the varsity team for a while. So we should start seeing some really good points. Right now they're just warming up their opponents, getting their volleys in to make sure that they're all ready to go when the match starts. So Seth, take us a little bit about how high school tennis is scored. Is it similar to what you might see in a professional level or is it a little bit different? So the matches themselves are scored the same as a as the pros, where they're going to play two out of best two out of three sets. So uh, they play games, six games in a set, and then they try best two out of three. Uh, as for the team scoring, the way it goes is we have four singles matches and three doubles matches. And as each match comes in, the win gets a point. First team to four points wins the match. So that's how we score team tennis at the high school level. Of course, we are waiting the start of this one. Again, that five-minute warm-up period where players are expected to hit the ball to give the other player a chance to get a feel for the court, a feel for the ball as well. Nothing to try to make them too tired out or gain a competitive advantage in that respect. Uh, Seth, what are some other things that you think that for a first-time viewer they should know about watching a high school tennis match? Oh, um, one of the great things about high school tennis is that uh, power really doesn't matter quite as much. So you have a lot of kids at the high school level playing varsity at 7th, 8th, ninth grade. Uh, skill level gets really, really high at those, those levels, and they can really rally the ball really well. So that's one of the things we're going to look for is, is, is good rallying among uh, some of the players. Some of the other things I think to look at with high school tennis is we don't have uh, line judges. So all the players themselves have to make their own individual line calls. Uh, it's one of the few sports where there's no official out at, at all during any of the matches. So the players have to um, mediate any issues that they have out on the court. Uh, the way that tennis works is that players make their own calls and we just accept the calls that they make. So you'll get a different advantage coming from those cameras up high. You'll kind of really see if the ball's in or out, but no U.S. Open uh, stat track on this one. We're just going to do the best that we can. And while we have some time here before this doubles match gets started, Seth, tell us a little bit about your experiences with White Bear Lake Tennis and how you came to be a coach here in White Bear Lake. That's awesome. I uh, played high school tennis out in Eden Prairie and then uh, continued my career in college. So as soon as I got hired by the White Bear Lake District as a math teacher, I uh, contacted the head coach, Christine Anderson, and uh, said I'd love to help out with the team. So I started out as an assistant varsity coach for my first two or three years uh, on the team. And then as our program grew and grew, we added a, a, a C squad or a B squad of, of extra guys beyond our JV team. So then I started coaching uh, that program and uh, they're out today over at Roseville's court. So while the varsity is playing here, the JV is playing over at Roseville. So they're out there today. And then uh, I've been with them now for a total of, wow, eight years. It kind of time flies with them. Uh, every year, our program's grown both in numbers and number of wins, so that's been really good. I think when Coach Anderson came in the previous year, we had uh, one team win. And uh, this year, we'll, we have three losses and ten wins, and we're going to be looking for a number three seed in our section, which will be really fantastic. 
So we talked about the doubles match and both of the White Bear Lake uh, tennis players that we're going to be watching here in a couple of minutes. Again, thank you for joining us here at South Campus. Uh, who are some of the other players in this White Bear Lake tennis program that have really stood out to you this season or in seasons past? Uh, Cooper Anderson, our number one singles player, he's uh, also an 11th grader. He's been with the varsity team since he was a 7th grader. Uh, he is fantastic, finished fourth last year in our section, just barely missed a spot to state in a really competitive section. Um, beyond that, uh, a lot of our doubles teams have been really competitive. Uh, I think if we're looking at this, both Bennett and James are Lake are uh, SEC conference uh, all conference players from last year and should be looking for those same points this year. And then uh, over on court number two, we have Nate Wilkie and Chuck Sass. They're uh, kind of interesting. They joined our varsity team the very first year they started playing tennis due to sheer athleticism, and then found that tennis was a sport for them. Started picking up great strokes, and uh, we're we're. Lake or SEC honorable mention last year and had a really good season. Let's talk about the team as a whole now. We talked again before we came on the air here about where Roseville is. Somewhere in the middle of the pack can tend to be on the lower side, but where do you expect Wiper? Where has Wiper Lake been historically for tennis? Historically, we've been right in that middle. So it's sort of been uh, Mounds View and East Ridge are number one and two in our conference. And then there's been this middle group of schools, Woodbury, us. Um, and Roseville uh, kind of right in that middle pack. And then that's kind of always been fighting out for number three, four, five. Stillwater has had a couple good seasons. Uh, this year, our only losses uh, to suburban East Conference schools have come to Mounds View and East Ridge. So we're looking to, to clean sweep the rest of the schools with this win today. Hopefully, w hopeful win against Roseville today. Warm-ups wrapping up again between this doubles match. Should be looking to get things going here pretty quickly. While we have the time, again, a reminder, if you'd like to volunteer with Suburban Community Channels and come on out and be a member of the team which does events such as this, feel free to give Arlen Becker a call. I'm not sure on the number off the top of my head. Hopefully we can throw that graphic up there. Or you can email Arlen at arlen at sccTV.org and you can find out information about how to come on out and be a part of our broadcasts here today. Again, a beautiful Beautiful day here at White Bear Lake South Campus. One of many beautiful days, specifically now that the sun has started to come out. The snow's melted. A slight wind blowing from our direction from left to right across the court. Does wind play that big of a factor at all? It can. Uh, the players with better topspin can get the ball to cut through the wind a little bit better and make sure that it doesn't affect it so much. Uh, the wind that we're having today isn't going to really affect them too much, but there have been some, some windy days. You can see we have the windscreens down in the back and on the sides of the courts. I don't we can't see the size, but they are there to try and cut the wind and make it a little bit better for the players. Um, what, what they'll notice is after the racket's been to determine who gets to serve and return, they also get to determine sides, and sometimes that becomes a factor based on what, what your preference is. Well, again, the last couple of services there as we almost had a ball come through the screen as James Williams gets that back, ready to continue the warm-up once again. Again, warm-up periods just about wrapping up here. Again, five minutes of warm-up time given. It's about 3.40, so it's elapsed a little bit longer than perhaps it should have. But again, with the limited amount of matches that have been held, I think that's okay. As we get the players coming up here, waiting for the start of this one, hopefully sooner rather than later. Again, this is one of the final broadcasts we'll be doing here in the 2017-18 school year. I believe we had a couple of lacrosse matches scheduled. We'll also carry the suburban or the classic suburban ultimate championship game next Friday here at South Campus. Should be an exciting game of ultimate as well. Now, Seth, for the fans in the stands, is there a particular spot where you think they should sit on the court as far as being able to see the action that's going on a little better? Um, ideally, they should kind of pick a match that they want to really follow and sit outside that match. Again, the, the first singles is always sort of the premier match that, that people tend to watch. Um, beyond that, if you kind of sit, sit in the middle of, of, of two different matches, you get a little bit of a different perspective. It gets a little tricky to keep score that way because you're trying to follow so much action. But, uh, but yeah, sitting right outside that first singles is always a good part. Well, it looks like the players are coming to the net together to uh, spin a racket to determine who serves and returns and which sides are picked. So this is usually done by one player choosing which racket and either saying up or down or P or D based on the logo on the bottom of the racket. Uh, the winner of it gets to gets to determine whether they um, serve, or serve first, return first, or which side they want to, to play from first. So if you, again, Seth, if you were to win the 
the uh, the spin, as it were. Is there one choice that you prefer to make in your playing career? Personally, I was always a good server. I love serving and coming to the net, so I would always choose to serve first, uh, kind of to try and de demoralize my opponent and show them that I had a good serve right away. Uh, in doubles, it usually tends to be that you want to serve first. Uh, most doubles matches are won by one break, meaning the returning team getting one game off of the server if, if, if they're two equally matched teams. So ideally, you get your serve in first and, and, and you get a little bit of an advantage going. It looks like Roseville is serving first this match, and Bennett King is going to be the first one to return it. King and Williams in the doubles match, and the service is away. Good save by King there. Right into that, and an early point there for White Bear Lake. So the way tennis scoring goes is that first point, instead of it being 1-0 now, we say 15 love. And actually, I should have said love 15. The service team always says their score first. Since they have no points, it's love. And since the returning team won the first point, it's 15. So love 15. Love 15 here as Roseville will serve again. Right into the net. Now on a play like that, is there another chance to serve it right away? Yep, every team gets two service points. So he has a first serve and then a second. That usually nice that tricky oh, shot there, yeah. Usually that second serve is a little bit softer, so it gives the returning team a chance to gain a little bit of an advantage. So love 30 in this first game. Again, a best of three match in sets, that is. Rose will serve again. King looking to return for the Bears. That was a great put away by James there. See how he angled it off the court? That way, Roseville didn't have a chance to try and get the ball back, saving it and putting up a lot. Well, a fantastic sir, uh, return by Williams there. Gives White Bear Lake game number one. Oh, sorry. No, it's it's Love 40 right oh, now. Oh, it is Love 40. I'm but sorry about that's that. That's OK. It's OK. So Love 40 the score. Now a chance for White Bear to put it away. Into the net. Another chance coming here for Roseville. Two straight service errors, and that will give White Bear Lake the game. They take it one game to nothing here in this first set of doubles action. Now, Seth, at this point, the two teams switch sides. Yep, the two teams switch sides on every odd combined odd game score. Uh, just that way, no team has an advantage with the sun or the wind or anything like that. So they'll pick a server who wants to serve from this side, and they'll stick with it pretty much throughout the entire game. Um, in high school tennis, coaches can come out and talk to their players during these changeovers to talk strategy or, or, or mental. Uh, players also get a break to get water, food, whatever they need to have. Uh, new to rules for this year for Minnesota State High School League is you can't have phones out on the courts because evidently some coaches were texting players during matches, which is not allowed. Now that's one of the downfalls of technology that we seem to have happened upon here in sports. As this time, King will serve it here for White Bear Lake. A nice spike there by Williams to get the early 15 love lead. So when we talked about that two and a half point average play, that's exactly what we're looking for there. That service, that return, and then the net player putting the ball right away at the, the guy at the net. So that was a perfect doubles point right there. King to serve again. Right-handed shot. Now, Seth, what happened on there? The ball was out past the service line, so it just was out past that back line. So he gets a second one there. And on that one, unfortunately, it was to the right of the line. So every serve has to be within that service box. Lines do count. So if it is on the line, it's considered in. Neither of those were. Roosevelt made good calls there. And unfortunately, Bennett has a double fault. 15-15 is. King will step up to serve now. Left side of the court as you're watching on your television screen. Nice put away by Williams there to go up 30-15. So one of the major strategies in doubles, and Bennett's done a good job of this from the deuce side, which is also known as the right side, deuce side, is uh, to try and serve the ball into the players' bodies to get those easy shots right up the middle for James to put away. So Bennett's been doing a good job of that so far. 
So that was a let. That's a little bit different than a fault. So the ball hit the net and then still bounced into the service court. So instead of this being Bennett's second serve, he gets to replay the point completely as his first serve. Roosevelt called that serve out, so now he's on his second serve. Perfect, and a perfect shot there by Roseville. Evens up this game at 30 apiece. Again, as you'll notice, we're not talking too much during the action itself, something which many professional broadcasting crews do, so we'll sit back and let the camera do the work. Nice shot by Williams there to give the game point situation up here for White Bear Lake. Knowing Bennett like I do, one of the major reasons he broke into the varsity team as a seventh grader was because he had hockey hands coming from a hockey background, quick, quick, quick reactions, which are hockey players tend to make decent tennis players because of those quick reactions. King to serve. Here, a little too strong, and just like that, White Bear Lake will take this second game of the first set, and they'll lead it two games to none. So what Bennett was trying to do there was trying to get a lob over the net player's head. It's a really good strategy in doubles to try and go over that person's head. Unfortunately for Bennett, it was a little short, and the Roseville player didn't quite take advantage of it like he could have. So once players pick sides on where they're returning from, so Bennett's always going to return from the deuce side, and James is always going to return from the ad side. He has to stick with that for the entire match until there's a set changeover. Timed well by Roseville. Good save by King there. And right into the net, and just like that, fifth, or excuse me, love 15, <laughs> going back White Bear's way again. And there, a nice volley between the both squads, getting some shots higher in the air, but also some line drives that both teams were able to handle pretty well. Yeah, that was a, that was a, a great point for White Bear Lake. They dug out some hard shots and, and, and really kept themselves in that in that game or in that point. Service line not good, right next to our equipment. The Roseville player serving to Williams. Check a shot, and it's 30 to nothing here in this third game. So in tennis, there's uh, three different types of serves that players are going to hit. There's flat serves, slice, and then topspin. Each one has its different advantages and disadvantages. A lot of players usually start their first serve with a really flat one, try and hit it as hard as they can and overwhelm their, their, their opponent with some speed and power. And then for your second serve, slice and uh, topspin allowed you to try and bring that ball back into the service box to make it a little more consistent. A little bit too late on the return there, and that'll set it up 15-30 now in this game. Into the net, we'll get another serve coming. 15-30, White Bear leading this set to nothing. And with that, it'll be 15-40. And a chance to go up a very considerable three games to none lead here in this first set. Now, Seth, is there an advantage in the mindset of going up in a significant lead, maybe three, four games to none in a, set, uh, a given set? Yeah, uh, there really is. There's a, a, a huge mindset set shift and also kind of how you have to play the sets. You can be way more aggressive when you're up like that. Really try and, and, and put the set away. If you get down a little bit, you have to play a little more conservative, which might not be your, your overall game. I was just a little wide for Bennett. Like you said last time, he was just a little bit late on that shot. Usually if a, if a team loses three games in a row, a coach usually will try and come out and talk to them and see what's going on, see if they can offer any insight from, from them watching the match or even just a mental reset on what that game would be like. 30 to 40 in this game. Do a take two on the service here from Roseville. I heard Williams call out. So he'll get, another, he'll get another chance at it. Nope. 
did not make the service box. That'll do it for this third game. White Bear leading set one, three games to none, as the teams will switch sides once again. And so your viewers can also see they have these scorecards up. White Bear's the black numbers and, and Roseville's the red. There's no real rationale to that other than I think uh, White Bear likes being those black numbers. <laughs> but they'll keep that up for the entire match so that the spectators can see sort of the game score. And then when the first set's done, you'll see there's a little zero up by that three. They'll change that over for the winner of the first set so that everyone can sort of see what's going on throughout it. And again, I'm not sure if we talked about this yet in, in the event that we have, I'm sorry, but what is a given set two as far as tennis goes? So a set goes to six games total, but you do have to win by two. So there are sets that get one, seven, five. If a set ever gets to six, six, they play something called a tiebreaker, where they play points out until somebody wins seven, wins seven points, but again, wins by two. So there are, there are, uh, tiebreakers that can go 11 9 12 10 and so on and so on so that's really just to determine who ends up winning that set uh, as like we said because they lost three in a row the roseville coach came out to talk to his players to see what was what was going on um, in high school tennis ideally it's a minute and a half changeover so there is a set amount of time that the coach is supposed to be out there talking to the players now, because we are airing on CTV in Roseville, what was the conversation, do you think, between the coach and his players in that instance? Ideally, the coach has noticed something about the White Bear Lake players that he can offer insight into the for the Roseville players, a weakness that they may have or something that they might be able to take advantage of. Or sometimes it's just a, a, a simple, come on, guys, you know you can do this, pump them up, get them ready to go again. Uh, body language is big on the tennis courts and making sure that they're excited oh, to be out there. Uh, with doubles, chemistry and your partner can make a, a huge difference. First service on game four. Lob shot by Williams. A little too strong on it, and that gives Roseville an 0-15 lead. I love for 15 lead, rather. <laughs> I'll get that terminology eventually here in this first game, or fourth game, rather, or the first set. And unlike uh, the U.S. Open in Wimbledon, if any of your viewers have seen that, there's no ball boys out there, and they only get two or three balls per match. So there's not a lot of people and not a lot of choice for those. Service from Williams returned and went out. I believe that makes it 15-15 here in game number four. So if you saw Bennett sort of stuck his finger out in the direction of out, that's another way of indicating that the ball's out instead of yelling it. So both are appropriate ways for a player to indicate that the ball was out. Great effort to get there. Not good enough, though. And it'll be 13-15 in this fourth game. Now, for games that might get a little more competitive. Do you really see any tennis players either in this year's program or in programs past that really get a little too into the game in some cases? Uh, yes, we have uh, currently one player from our program, uh, our number one singles brother, Austin Anderson, who also happens to be the coach's son, um, made it to the state tournament his freshman year. So it was a absolutely fantastic player now playing Division One college level, he uh, would get very, very intense and, and sort of started to put in some psychological things to help him out through, throughout a match. So after every point, he had a towel at the back of the, the, the chain link fence and he'd come and, and touch that towel as sort of a touch point to recenter himself for each point. But he was also playing incredibly competitive tennis within the state and, and got himself ranked within the state by his 10th uh, grade year. Game point sent out there as the ball bounces into several courts. Now, Seth, what's the uh, what's the protocol as far as if a ball were to carry out into another court while another game was going on? Yeah, so the, the protocol is if the ball runs across the court, the, the, the court that the ball runs across can call a let, stop the point, replay it from, from nothing. Um, and then appropriately, the, the player that lost the ball, they just wait until it gets sent back down their way. So that's one of the disadvantages of the court setup that White Bear Lake has, where we have eight courts in a row. Balls tend to go down. If you watch at Stillwater or, or Eastridge, they have courts set up in twos or threes. So the ball can't get down as many courts in a time. You're disrupting the opponent a little bit less. But every school has different court setups based on you know cost and, and, and space. 4 nothing game lead for Williams and King as they did win that last game, and Roseville will start service here in game number five of this opening set. So you asked about what the Roseville coach talked to his players about. You can see Roseville set up differently than they were the first three games. 
So in the f in the first couple games, they had one player serving and then one player in that service box with the idea of trying to both get up into the into the net, but that evidently wasn't working. So the Roseville coach probably gave him a different strategy of both players starting back on the baseline. It's sort of a, the second best position you can be in in doubles, first being both players at the net at the same time. Game number five tied at 15 now, as I believe one service went both teams' ways. Actually, I think it's uh, I think it's 15:30. White Bear 15 Lake. 30. If they're serving from the ad side, it has to be one of those odd odd numbers. As you may have noticed, this is why we have an expert here in the booth. Shot over, hit the net. In the service. And an outside shot there as King hit it a little bit too strong. And that'll give Roseville a, a game point. Actually, I think it's 30-30. Uh, 30, 30. 30 all right now. Like I said, Seth, I'll get there eventually. Well, no, Maybe. <laughs> you're doing a great job. It's, it's hard to do both uh, commentary and keep score at the same time. I never thought I'd be able to do it. So, you know, I appreciate you, you keeping score for me. And we'll go ahead and I think this time it's 40-30 here. On service for Roseville, looking for their first game in this set. In service. Long shot. A nice attempt there by the Roseville tennis player. And now we are tied at 40-40 and we head to the deuce. So if you remember in that first game where White Bear Lake put away all those volleys, it looks like Roseville's trying to counteract that by lobbing and keeping the ball high and away from the guy at the net. Deuce number one underway. Dug out nicely by King on the back line. That was a nice drop shot by James trying to keep that ball low so the Roseville player couldn't take it out. So we'll have advantage, White Bear Lake here. Into the net, we'll get another chance at it here. Again, you'll notice we do have that score bug up now and it disappeared, but that's okay. Williams returns. King with power. Swing and a miss, and that will give White Bear Lake the commanding five to nothing lead here in set number one. Yeah, Bennett didn't miss that uh, overhead like he did earlier. He made up for his mistake at a, a little bit more of a crucial time, so it was uh, a, a good makeup for that one. Five nothing, White Bear Lake leading here in set number one. Again, a best of three. Now, Seth, for the matches that we see in front of us, is this all the matches that we will see today, or are there, are there more players waiting in the wings to take the court? These are all the matches that they uh, that will play. Most varsity teams carry a total of 12 people, so the four singles players, the two doubles teams, so a total of six there, meaning 10, 10 kids get points in every match, and then one exhibition doubles. So it kind of... If one of your players gets injured, they might change that exhibition to a singles versus doubles, but, but they'll carry somewhere between 10 to 12 players. Is there a difference as far as the amount of players in a junior varsity or a B or a C level then, or is it yeah, pretty so much J on par? Junior varsity scores the same way that varsity does, so they'll carry 12 guys, and then the B squad is, we're a no-cut program at White Bear Lake, so anybody who wants to come out and play tennis should come out and play. It's a fantastic sport. We get freshmen through seniors who, maybe seniors who got cut from a baseball team, or seniors who just are done running around a track like a rabbit, want to do something a little more fun and play some tennis, come out and, and, and play their first time their senior year. First service, great hit by Williams there to force it right at the feet and a 15 love lead here in game number six. Yeah, James has been a monster at the net today. He's really been putting those away so far. Well, here's King to serve again. Service not quite there. Second chance at it now for King, he got it there.
So everybody Williams forces it back, and that's 30 love here in game number six again for the tandem of Williams and King. Now King, as we learned in the pregame, we'll wait for service before sharing that fact. Right into the net, he'll get it again. King had the pleasure of appearing on ESPN a season ago, and we'll wait. Right into the net, and that'll be a double fault there for White Bear Lake, and they'll get a chance to serve again. 40-15, I believe, the score in this uh, I think it's 30-15. Is it 30-15? It is. Service across. Again, King appearing on ESPN as his father is the creator, founder, whatever you want to call it, of the all hockey hair team for the boys high school hockey tournament. Bennett's very proud of his own hockey hair, which uh, he wears for tennis. Service again twice in the net. Bennett having some troublemaking service and again not doing too well here in this game but of course lots of time to regain his his form you know when a player does that it usually means they're dropping their head during their serve so he kept his head up on that one through point of contact hit a nice deep serve to roseville got the game but if a player is doing that as a coach what i'm looking for is to trying to tell them to keep their head up make sure you're watching the ball through point of contact and usually that fixes any of those problems now so put the score up here I'll switch sides. That is the first match, as we did, or not the first match, the first set in favor of White Bear Lake, giving them the one to nothing set lead here in this one. So just like at those game changeovers, at the end of a set, players have a t uh, an opportunity to talk to their coach, get some water, get a little break. Some of them, if they have to go to the restroom, can use the restroom. Instead of the minute and a half changeover, there's actually a three minute changeover during sets. Most high school players do not take that three minute changeover, but it looks like Bennett wasn't smart enough to bring water out onto the court today for himself. So he's going over to the water jug, which uh, the White Bear Lake managers, uh, Mimi and Emma, help put out every day. They've been invaluable to us this year. So one set to none, White Bear Lake leads again, best of three, as we'll probably say ad nauseum here. <laughs> again, alongside Seth Salinger, and I am Alex Westhead here at White Bear Lake South Campus, bringing you the first of what hopefully will be many tennis matches, both on the boys' side here in the spring and on the girls' side in the fall. I want to thank you for joining us live on SEC Sports in the White Bear Lake area, or if you are watching on uh, the Roseville Local Channel, we want to thank you for being here, a part of our broadcast as well. Thank you for joining us and making tennis a part of your wonderful Thursday here in White Bear Lake. Looking to start... Set number two, Roseville will serve. Into the net, we'll try it again. Again, you may hear the sounds of the concourse here as the second serve was out, another double fall, and that'll be love 15 here. White, White Bear, Bear Lake track again. practice must have been let out. Those are some of White Bear Lake track guys walking themselves home. And again, you may hear some noises or two coming from Students walking by. Great serve there. Not a ton Williams could do with that. It'll be 15-15 as you hear the ground rule double comment coming from out in the stands. Again, so we it looks like uh, White Bear Lake's out of out of balls. So I think they'll they'll try and send one of the spectators out to go grab that one that went behind the bleachers. So 15-15 here. So we await more uh, tennis balls to make an appearance. Again, to wrap up my last point, if you hear anything that uh, might not be uh, kosher with uh, <laughs> public access television, we apologize for that. <laughs> but sometimes that's what high school kids will do. As we take a look here at some of the other matches going on, it looks like some more balls have been recovered so we can continue this match here. Again, 15-15 in game number one. Right into the net, and that'll be 30-15 as Roseville takes the advantage. So some of those other matches, it looks like uh, Cooper Anderson and, and one singles is down 3-2 to, to Roseville. Garrett Kane, uh, our number two singles, is up 3-2 to Roseville. And 
Nice return by Williams, but just a little bit outside the line, 40-15 as the game point comes up here for Roseville. And Matias Erickson, our, our number three singles, is down 0-1, and Andrew is up 3-2 for four singles today. Serve is out. Roseville gets another chance at it. Here, perfect placement from Roseville. Dug out and a spike there to end it. That gives Roseville their first game of this match. As they lead set number two, one game to none. Unfortunately, I would say as a coach that that first game after that first set is the most critical game for a team. If you're up 6-0 and you win that first one, you kind of put the foot on the throat of your opponent and can really close out a game. So White Bear Lakes let Roseville back in with some confidence and, and, and a thought that it's a whole new set. So who knows what can happen. So. They'll have a changeover like they usually would. Um, coaches cannot come out and talk to their uh, players during this changeover at one game. So White Bear Lake's going to have to deal with it, and, and hopefully they'll get this next game and, and, and regain some confidence on that one. So in a hypo hypothetical situation, if in an instance where a coach came out when they weren't supposed to, is there any sort of a penalty associated with that, or does it just is it just an unwritten rule? Uh, it's, a, it's an actual Minnesota State High School League rule, so you could forfeit, have to forfeit the match if you do that. Um, most coaches at this level during just regular conference play would uh, politely talk to their, their opposing coach and, and let them know that that's not okay, and, and that would be the end of it. In a section match or a state match, it, it might be something completely different because the stakes are a little bit higher. Cheeky attempt there by King goes to the wayside. Roseville will take a love 15 lead in this game. And Alex, that's exactly what I would call it, a cheeky attempt. I would have loved to have seen Bennett just put that ball away instead of trying to be a little cute with it. Left 15, Williams in service now for White Bear Lake. Oh, swing and a miss there by Roseville, 15-15, even this one up. Oh, well, that's the first ace of the match. An ace is when uh, the server serves and the opponent doesn't touch the ball with the racket of any point. Uh, Roseville was there, but just kind of swung and miss. Now, is there anything different that Williams did with that service to try and make the ball have a little deception or a curve on it at yeah, all? Yeah, it looked like he had a little more topspin on that one than he'd been having recently, especially that one. He slowed that one down, put more topspin on it. Think about it as like a curveball in baseball, where you're putting more movement on it, slowing down the pace of it. So if they're starting to time what you're doing, you can mix up your, your speed of it just to sort of throw them off a little bit. Williams again in service. Good volley here ended as it's just a little bit low for the Roseville tennis player. And I believe that's another game for White Bear Lake. I think they have it at I think there's a little bit of confusion on the court about the score. 40-15. 40-15, okay. 40-15, there we go. Again, one of the advantages to being right here on the court is that players are able to talk with us <laughs> in the event that we forget what the score is as well. Williams in service. Lofted shot in the air. Roseville gets to it. Another lofted shot, hits the blue. Good save attempt there, but it does go wide, and that'll be another game for White Bear Lake. Well, that's the disadvantages of having nets on the back, is that Roseville player may have been able to get that if there wasn't for the chain link fence. And you asked earlier what happens when a ball goes onto the other court. The ball from this court landed on the court to the right of us, and they stop their point, call the let, and they'll have to play over. It's just one of those things that you end up having to do every now and then. Roseville to serve again. Even in games one to one in the second set. Crosses a ball, came on in, they'll call that there. Great volley there, gives Roseville the 15 love lead. Er, 
James making that move into the middle of the court to take the ball out of the air is a great move. It's exactly what he should have done. What he was trying to do is get a little further closer to the, the alley to not give Roseville a chance to do it. He hasn't made too many mistakes like that today. He's really feasted at the net, so I'm, he'll, he'll, he'll shrug that one off and go at it again. 15 left. Let's serve. Play the back on it across for Williams. Too bad for White Bear Lake right into the net. And that should be even more of an advantage here for Roseville. James was trying to get himself up to the net, which is a really powerful position in doubles tennis. So he's, he was working his way up, doing all the right stuff. Just kind of made a, a little unforced error at the end. Service from Roseville. Into the net. And that'll give Roseville another advantage here in the set. As we await the service on this one, I believe the score being is it sent across here. We'll get to that in a moment. King tried to kill it, couldn't do so, and that'll give Roseville this game as they lead set number two, two games to one. That was a great serve by the Roseville player. He served it with spin right into the body of James, sort of jammed him up right in the middle of his body, so he couldn't get a lot of pace back on the ball, which gave him the opportunity to hit a, a, a ball at Bennett that was hard for Bennett to return back. So it was a really nice strategic move on the Roseville players. That was that same setup that gave White Bear Lake trouble the first time they saw it, so we'll see if White Bear can make some adjustments with that. Some of the other double scores, it looks like Matias and Matias and Blake are up 3 nothing. Uh, Charlie and Nate are up one nothing, and then Gavin Cheetah's playing an exhibition and just started a, a, a new match. Actually, no, I'm sorry, I, I apologize. He's up one set, nothing already. Now the players switch sides here. Again, White Bear leads overall one set to nothing, but trails two to one in this second set. Again, if you're, if you're watching from Roseville or watching in Roseville, again, we're sorry we don't know the names of the players which Williams and King are facing. Sent across as we look to start. So the missile will call it out. And King will get another chance to serve. Pretty good volley there, it's in a ball out, and that'll be 15 love in favor of White Bear Lake here in game number four of this second set. For anybody who just wants to watch something interesting, James at the net, you can see that even when he's not really a part of the point, he's still moving back and forth, in and out, both to give Roseville something else to look at and distract them, but also to make sure he's on his toes should a ball come. It's one of those things that younger doubles players don't always see, is that extra movement, that no matter what's happening, that guy at the net's always moving, not just standing there watching his, his, uh, his, uh, gosh, uh, <laughs> his partner do all the work. 30 love here in this game in favor of the Bears. Lob shot drops and Roseville will do the same. A little too strong and a chance to put away this game early as the Bears lead this one 40 to love. Communication with the court to your right. Again, looking for tennis balls, the eternal quest here for a tennis player. <laughs> they seem to disappear no matter what. This king awaits service to come, and here it is. Well, too strong and a clean sweep of that game. Puts White Bear up, or even rather, two to two in games here in the second set. It is tennis etiquette to always come to the to your service with two balls, one in your hand, ready to serve, and one in your pocket, so that if you miss that first one and you fault in the first one, you have a second one ready to go, so the opponent's not waiting around for you to try and find another one. Service on the way. It's moved by King, a good return from him. 
right into the net. And Love 15 is White Bear Lake starting to pull away here in this game. It seems like it seems like James and Bennett really came out with a strategy for this game, lobbing, keeping the ball deep against their opponents. It's been going really well. Very busy day here on the campus of the White Bear Lake Athletic Fields as service comes. Returned a while. Sharp spike and a perfect shot there right in the corner to even this match, this game up at 15. It's one of those great things about doubles. Bennett admitted to his partner that he, he didn't hit quite hit the shot he was looking for to. And uh, James just gave him a high five, pumped back up, ready to go for the next point. 15-15, your score. The service. The cross, as we heard King say, oh, he'll get another chance. Shot in, a nice return. I believe that was out. That'll be 30-15 here in favor of White Bear, or in favor of Roseville. Again, a very busy day here on at White Bear Lake. Softball games going on. Just a few hours lacrosse games will start happening as well. It's a good time to be outside for service into the net. So Bennett called a let on that one. And since the let occurred on the second serve, Roseville only gets one serve this time. Service could not be returned. I think Bennett called that one out. Oh, so I, White Bear's taking that point. That's one of those things. I, all high school players, I think, try to make the absolute best calls that they can. But some of those balls are coming close to 100, 110 miles an hour. It's, it's, it's hard to see. From our angle, it's really hard to make those calls, too. A little wait service here. Into the net. He'll try again. Good volley of action there. Sends it back and out. And a point a there for White Bear. Really nice volley by James right into the body of the Roseville player. Again, trying to jam him up so that he didn't have a lot of options with that ball. Service. Deflected, kept alive and out again. That should be the game with White Bear Lake taking that one. As they'll now lead this one three games to two in set number two. Uh, it looks like White Bear Lake changed up their uh, strategy as well. Both players playing at the baseline uh, instead of one player up, one player back. Not, not entirely sure why they did that. Uh, they were having success otherwise, but, but we'll see if they continue it throughout the rest of the match. You talk about sports, the game of adjustments, and certainly none so more than tennis, where even a centimeter or an inch one way or the other means a significant difference in the outcome of a match. And we take a break here. White Bear leading three games to two in this second, or yeah, three games to two in the second set. Already up one set to nothing as head coach of White Bear Lake Tennis comes on over to join in the conversation or perhaps just give some uh, adulation to the players for being up. You should see what's in some of those tennis bags. A lot of them now are built in with built-in coolers to keep their uh, their water and Gatorade nice and cold, bananas, whatever they put in there. And those things are like little mini campers for all of their tennis tennis gear. Most players will come to a match at this level with uh, two to four strung rackets ready to go. A player at a high level will break a string about once a week, if, if not even more. It's Christine Anderson again, the head coach of White Bear Lake. It looks Certainly. like she came out to talk to Cooper because Cooper dropped that first set. So getting some adjustments and, and needed support so we can come back and win the second set, hopefully. Well, wait service here. Williams serving now for the Bears. Spike shot returned by Roseville. Williams with a desperation attempt that went out. And that'll give Roseville points.
Now, Seth, I'm not sure at this point what the score is of this match. Is it 15-15? I believe it is. Nice shot there from Williams, unable to be returned. That should make it 30-15. White Bear Lake in this one. Oh, sorry about that. I think I distracted you a little bit with, uh, with, with talk of Cooper, but I, I believe it is 30-15 now. Williams on the serve. Turned out is called by Williams. And that'll be 40-15 White Bear Lake. That was a good idea on Roseville's player. Go over the head, go nice and deep, but uh, just a little bit out. Certainly very close either way. Williams serves. Could not be returned. I wonder if the Roseville player called out. Or perhaps not as they are shaking hands. And that'll give White Bear Lake another game. And they'll lead this one. Four games to oh, two. We, we, we must have been off on the we must have been off on the score earlier because now I believe it is 40-30. So I apologize to the viewers on that one, but uh, I believe this is serving for game point now. Brian Pelican, uh, White Bear Lake Athletics Director, if you're watching, a tennis scoreboard. Let's <laughs> let's get on. <laughs> Service across. Could not be returned as that went out. Again, of course, Seth, both of both you and I good friends with the uh, athletic director. <laughs> Yeah, I asked, I asked him for a snowblower this year. We didn't quite get that, but uh, the first uh, two weeks of practice, we had kids out with uh, shovels trying to shovel off the courts. Unfortunately, I think we lost a couple kids during those first two weeks. They came out to get a tan and instead got a, got a workout. Now, with the weather, how did White Bear Lake Tennis adjust? Was there practices in the gym, or was it did it try to stay outside? Uh, we, uh, we did a lot of conditioning inside, and then... We shoveled to try and get those courts clear so we could get outside. The tricky thing is, is those first two weeks tend to be our tryouts to see who's on varsity and JV. So uh, Coach Anderson secured us some courts at Lifetime in White Bear Lake, and so we were able to hold tryouts with the kids that we thought were going to have a chance to make varsity. And then when the big 18 inches came, that sort of just threw a wrench into everything. Uh, luckily, we only had to reschedule two matches, but uh, otherwise we've gotten most of the matches in this season that we were supposed to have. Service across, returned by Williams. Oh, a great spike there to keep it alive. King couldn't do anything with it, and that's points for Roseville. Uh, this player from Roseville did that same thing to James at the end of last game, where he served right into James's body, just like that one. So it seems like the Roseville player figured something out about James's returns and, and going to keep serving him there until James makes an adjustment. into the net. He'll try it again. Return by Williams rushing to it. He's able to send it across, but it hits the net. And that'll turn into points for White Bear Lake. Those were some really quick hands by James on that one. Wow. Sometimes those ones just happen, and you, you thank the tennis gods on that one. Service upcoming here. Way up high and across. It looks like on our scoreboard there in the bottom right, it looks like it's 30-15 in this set here, or this game rather, excuse me, for White Bear Lake. Service. And across in play as it's able to be sent across, Ooh. but out for King. That should even the set up at 30. That was, tough. that was a weird strategy for the, them to take. Usually if the ball goes over the guy at the net's head, his, his partner is the one to go chase it down at a diagonal course. It just makes it a little bit easier to try and return it. But Bennett saw something and, and almost got that one back. Strong shot there. Oh, and a great volley there dropped by Williams, and Roseville will get a game point upcoming. Again, as you see on your screen, White Bear leading this second set, four games to two. They can put it away if they win this one. Correction, four games to three. I cannot read. Sent across that 
was out, we get another chance at it. I, I, I believe it is four games to two right now. If it was four to three, they would have changed over at the last one. I think that was a preemptive three up. Cross for Williams. He'll charge it, send straight down, return well. And out, and that will tie. We'll get another deuce up coming. So usually in doubles, you put your stronger returner on the ad, ad side because you can win a game three different ways on an ad side and only once on the deuce side. So in this team that plays together a lot, they must have determined that James tends to have more consistent returns, which is why he's over on that ad side. So the advantage here in this first deuce, or the second deuce of the match, they'll go the way of the White Bear Lake Bears. And we'll get another chance to bring it back even. That shot's and square a couple of courts down, and that'll give White Bear Lake that game, and they'll take a 5-2 to two lead here in set number two. It looks like Bennett will be serving, the, serving out for the set, so if Bennett can uh, hold his serve on this one, White Bear Lake will take the overall match, which is a, a, a good place for a team to be in, serving out for your own set. As you see the card flipped over, we know for sure now, one set to nothing, White Bear Lake lead. Five games to two in this second set. Again, should Roseville rally to win this set, there would be a decisive third set. Now, should we not get there? Is there any difference to a third set as far as how it's scored, just because it's that third set? Nope, it's scored exactly the same. Um, in high school tennis, if a match is, if, a, if an overall team match is already decided, they sometimes won't play that third set, and they'll do something called a super tiebreaker, where they'll play a tiebreaker to 10 points, just for, for time's sake. We know these kids are busy. Um, for this, today we had three players late due to AP testing, so a lot of tennis players tend to take a lot of hard AP classes, so trying to get them out at a reasonable time, they won't always play that third set if it's not necessary. Now I see, as we're looking out, there's a lot of different headgear on different players across the uh, the courts here. Is there any restrictions on hats or anything? Uh, I believe the hat restriction for tennis is very similar to the hat restriction for golf, that as long as it doesn't promote any illicit or illegal activities or isn't uh, offensive to anybody, players can wear what they want. So now I think we've got lots of Nike hats, Adidas hats, whatever's out there. Logos are okay as long as it's not offensive. I'd like to get a look at Bennett's hat at some point in time. I know it has something to do with the flow of his hair. I just quite, I kind of forgot. So we'll maybe at the end, if we can get him over, show the hat. Service so again did not go across. I believe that ties this game at 15. So we get a ball coming in from the other court here too strong on that. He'll get another chance. Again, two straight service errors there for King, and that gives Roseville the Oh, I think, I think the player clapped his racket, as in good serve. Oh. Uh, it's one of those etiquette things again. So if you hit a good shot, sometimes you'll clap your racket or you'll you'll put a hand out as even. So I think, uh, I think he cut that one in and that it's actually 30-15 White Bear Lake was a, a really nice serve, I think, on Bennett's part. There's a late service again here. Santa Cross. All the way out. That was a great move by James on that one to cut that volley off and, and make Roseville have to make a hard shot back. Well, this is a uh, set and match point. If Bennett can, can serve this one out. Match point. Game in the hands of King. And then into the net, and they'll get a, another chance as it's 40-30 now. Oh, I hope James doesn't regret that one, because that, uh, that was an easy way to end the match. 40-30.
It's Williams I think, right I think in the Bennett back. was a little upset at James for missing that previous volley <laughs> and just decided to hit him in the back. You see a, a stare down from Williams <laughs> looking at King as we'll head to a deuce now. It's one of the things new tennis players to doubles always get. If you see James is crouched down in the middle of the service box, they always get really nervous that their partner's gonna serve right into the middle of their back. Now here we go, deuce number three. Ball didn't quite make it, and that'll be advantage. And once again, match point number two here for White Bear Lake. If the ball hit the net and then leaked over to the other side, it would have counted as a point for Roseville on that one. They don't get to play a let during the middle of the point for that. Match point into the dirt, and that will do it. The duo of Williams and King get the win here today, winning two sets to nothing over the Roseville Raiders. And in keeping with good tennis etiquette, all players shake hands at the net to, to congratulate each other on good games. Well, Seth, again, I think this wraps up our match here today. Anything else you'd like to say as far as what you saw today or any other analysis that you'd like to share? Oh, I thought James did a fantastic job at the net. Uh, the service games for White Bear Lake were, were really fantastic. Uh, they came in with a strategy, executed it really well, keeping the ball high and out of the range of the Roseville net players. They did a really fantastic job. I, I have a feeling Coach Anderson is going to give them nothing but uh, high praise for this match. Well, again, that will wrap things up here from White Bear Lake South Campus. Again, lots of other matches going on. Unfortunately, we don't have the uh, the camera range or the sight lines, I believe, to do those matchups as we are on camera here again for everybody. Uh, Seth, again, thanks for joining us here, and this was this was a lot of fun. Alex, I, I really love doing this. I hope you come out more. This was a, a blast, and hopefully NBC heard me and, and wants to send me out to Wimbledon or the Australian Open one day. I, I'm available for hire. Well, for Seth Salinger and our entire SCC production crew, I am Alex Westhead. Thank you for joining us. Again, the tandem of Williams and King victorious over Roseville by a score of two, gave two sets to none. This is your home for White Bear Lake Tennis, SCC Sports.